In this chapter of political science, we would understand the challenges to and restoration of Congress system and the movement of non-Congressism. So this was an important move that started post the failure of the Congress party, which was witnessed since 1967 after the general elections. Now, the most important thing that we need to note here is the political succession and the history behind it. So in 1964, Jawaharlal Nehru actually passed away and that was after a prolonged Ill illness of nearly one year. Now, the main question that came in the Indian system was who after Nehru and what after Nehru. However, the things turned out to be more smooth than it was thought and under the able leadership of K. Kamraj, uh, who came into power was Lal Bahadur Shastri. Now, Lal Bahadur Shastri was one of the leaders who was known for his sincerity, commitment towards principles, being an able man and was wholeheartedly supported by all members of the party. The problems that were present in the Indian society during the time he got elected were deep rooted. For example, a high amount of uh, unemployment, huge poverty, communal divisions, regional divisions within the country were witnessed. Under the able leadership of Lal Bahadur Shastri, these things came into uh, actually a streamlined movement. However, he was there for a very short tenure from 1964 to 66. In those two years, he faced numerous challenges from monsoons to droughts to crisis, civil wars, wars with China, war with China and towards the end of his um, uh, life, he was in Uzbekistan and uh, he, he was basically uh, he, uh, was in Tashkent, the current capital of Uzbekistan, that time during uh, his tenure was part of Russia and was into an agreement with Muhammad Ayub Khan, the president of Pakistan and the idea was to end the war. His famous slogan, Jai Jawan Jai Kisan, had become very popular and still now it holds a very high importance. The economic implications of the war with China and the ongoing war with Pakistan brought in great problems. However, after his sudden death, there was a big conflict. Who after Shastri? So, there was a segment of group that said that it should be Morarji Desai, the other segment who uh, actually believed Indira Gandhi to be one of the good leaders to take the power. Indira Gandhi, daughter of Jawaharlal Nehru, became the president of the Congress uh, and was elected. He was in Lal Bahadur Shastri's cabinet the Minister of Information, the Union Minister of Information. When she came to power, she ruled from 1966 to 77 and then again from 1980 to 84. However, the whole period during which Indira Gandhi ruled came out with turmoils. Uh, there was a time when Congress, uh, which was a uh, only single dominated party in India, started to fade in color and then the revival under her in 1971 again took place. So we'll understand that uh, mechanism, how it actually happened. However, when Indira Gandhi uh, came into power, one of the major slogans of Indira Gandhi was Garibi Hatao, which is remove poverty. Uh, she was one of the major proponents for environmental protection, was assassinated on 31st October in 1984 and uh, the tenure during which Indira Gandhi remained, uh, there were numerous important developments. For example, nationalization of bank, abolition of privy purse, uh, nuclear test being done in India. So those were some of the remarkable things that were done. Now what happened in 1967? The fourth general election took place. Now this was the, till this time, Congress was a dominated party and the trend started to change in 1967. If we look onto the map here, we can see the areas marked in red. The areas marked in red indicate the areas where Congress did not got a majority. And this was in 
seven of the major states following two other states and uh, one of the south states in uh, showed that dmk came to power uh, dravid Muntera Kazangam, which was one of the major parties that came to power. The other regions in the north had coalition governments or the coalition party came in, coming into power. Coalition means not one single government or not one single political party actually proved its dominance. But what were the important things that happened which led to this dilution of the Congress during that time. So the one important thing was devaluation of currency and that was because of the pressure from United States. The Indian rupee in contrast to USD devalued from rupees 5 to rupees 7 which was a significant figure during that time uh, and this led to price hike. Now, as soon as inflation started, the essential commodities got dearer, food scarcity became rampant, unemployment started to rise. All this led to unrest and a popular unrest led to law and order problems, frequent hartals, frequent buns started and many of them were led by opposition the idea was to pressurize the government during that time and as a result there were segments or groups of non-congress parties being formed now these non-congress uh, parties which were found uh, among them ram manohar lohia played a leading role lohia is called as the proponent of the concept of non-congressism the idea was that congress whatever it is doing is is not the right way and then the socialist and the communist party came into existence so cpi cpim which is the communist party of india marxist leninist uh, they actually raised armed struggles uh, for the rights of the agrarian and the peasant uh, section of the society now ram manohar lohia strictly believed that inexperience of indira gandhi and the internal factionalism within the congress provided an opportunity itself for the congress to topple down now with this opportunity uh, again it said that the interest of only the rich are protected the poor are not given uh, a right place in the society so ramano loya was initially the founder of congress socialist party uh, after the split of the parent party he became the leader of the socialist party so moving from the congress socialist party he became the leader of the socialist party he started the concept of non-congressism and advocated that there should be reservation for backward classes and opposed the idea of English as a medium of instruction. Similarly, in the South, Anadurai had an important role. Anadurai was a journalist, a popular writer and an orator as well. And he joined DMK. When he joined DMK, he was one of the major proponents of Dravid culture. And uh, he said that the anti Hindi, uh, Hindi agitations uh, which were to oppose Hindi as an official language in South India uh, was started because he was a proponent of the written culture and he also supported that states should be given more autonomy. Similarly, K. Kamraj who nominated the name or who proposed the name of Lal Bahadur Shastri is considered as another big advocator and under the time of K. Kamraj it is believed that he was one of the leaders who said that the old members of the party should move away and space should be cleared for the young ones to enter into political parties. Now at that time when non-Congress party uh, parties came into power, Sanyukt, uh, Sanyukt Vidhayak Dal, which is called as SVD, came into existence. Now, SVD was a group of non-Congress parties. Uh, some of the important uh, non-Congress parties during that time that came together were CPI, CPIM, SSP, then Republican Party, Swaraj Party. These were some of the popular parties and then Bhartiya Jan Sangh. Uh, so these parties came together and they started a wave which 
actually was a deep rooted wave to rule down the ideas now indira gandhi during that time faced a double challenge the challenge was from the members within the congress party so it was indira gandhi versus the syndicate group now syndicate were a group of powerful and influential leaders that were present within the congress system and the congress party and they played an important role in making indira gandhi the prime minister however after she turned out to be the prime minister she started taking uh, guidance and support from uh, advisers outside the syndicate group and this created unrest within the system now she faced a twin challenge one was to deal with the syndicate group and the other was to uh, deal on to the grounds at which congress was losing its Uh, presence in major states across india so indira gandhi during that time adopted a very bold strategy which was known as a 10 point program but the syndicate group was extremely important who were the major members of syndicate group k kamraj as i mentioned was one of the leaders who believed that young should be given a space rather than old in the political party he was the chief minister of tamil nadu and the president of the congress party when uh, lal bahadur shastri came to power then there were important state leaders like s k patel of bombay city uh, s nilanjan gappa of mysore n sanjeev reddy from andhra pradesh atulya ghosh from west bengal so these were some of the very powerful and influential leaders who were part of the syndicate group and there was a kind of uh, distrust within the congress where syndicate group versus indira gandhi concept started to grow now the 10 point program which started in may 1967 was important here uh, indira gandhi brought social control of the bank so nationalization of banks nationalization of general insurance sealing on the urban property land reforms housing reforms rural poor becoming one of the major sectors of attention and the idea of removing poverty under the garibi hatao andolan so those were some of the major ideas and the commandments that led indra indra gandhi to move forward now during that time there was the death of the president zakir hussain now after the death of president zakir hussain the post was vacant in sanjeev reddy who was uh, one of the syndicate members from andhra pradesh was brought by the congress as one of the names for the post of president however indira gandhi preferred vv giri and asked vv giri to sign up as an independent candidate support uh, getting the support of indira gandhi however uh, there was a lot that went inside and this uh, along with abolition the idea of abolition of privy purse which was led down by indira gandhi were some of the moves which led to internal uh, split within the system and morarji desai who were pa- who was part of the indira gandhi's cabinet actually started to leave the government now indira gandhi projected that this split was uh, a kind of just a revolt against indira gandhi and it came out to a fact that it became congress old versus congress new or congress requisitionist and this congress new or congress requisitionist was under indira gandhi the old congress was under the syndicate group so this break within the congress was witnessed now a lot of leaders believe that this would lead to breaking down of the roots of congress and during the next election the congress might lose its ground in the next elections however the things did not turned out the way it was and uh, with the 1940 1971 elections that were done congress turned out with a super victory under indira gandhi and this was congress r or the new congress that turned out to be the real congress of india and this time the major thing that was attributed was the constitution was amended uh, to remove the legal obstacles for abolition of privy purse now this itself uh, was one of the major reasons for victory for indira gandhi in the 1971 elections now um, as we said 
who came to power as a president so it was uh, n sanjeev reddy versus vivi giri however uh, despite all the things and uh, the nilanjan gappa's strategy where it was said that some of the mlas and mps would vote in favor of sanjeev reddy finally vivi giri came into power and this actually helped in uh, moving the concept further Uh, when we are talking about this congress and non congressism non congressism debate one important thing that crops up is defection what is defection defection simply means a person who was elected from one political party who won on the name of that political party actually joins another political party so this term was later popularly known as ayaram gayaram now this term ayaram gayaram is not that simple this came or has its origin from gayaram now gayaram was one of the leaders and mlas in haryana in 1967 within a tenure of 15 days within a tenure of merely 15 days he changed his party three times from congress to U, uh, united front then from united front to congress and back again to united front and this was when one of the leaders said that gayaram is now ayaram and then concept of gayaram ayaram started where the political parties uh, within the political parties the political leaders actually leave a political party on which they were win and join another political party however later anti defection law was brought into account uh, during this time we have also seen that there were uh, numerous important instances that we have to understand the role of karpuri Tha tharur who was the chief minister of bihar was again important he was one of the socialist and reformist leader and had an important role uh, uh, had an important role as Uh, one of the labor move movement leaders and the peasant movement leaders also uh, one of the very strong believer and supporter of uh, ram manohar lohia uh, also participated in the movements led by jp narayan this became extremely important so what happened in 1971 was historic uh, all of the sudden uh, indira gandhi brought the fact that the lok sabha would be dissolved and elections would be held the way this was held and the way congress came to power both of the things were actually uh, astonishing all the major non communist parties non congress parties formed an alliance this alliance was known as grand alliance so it was grand alliance versus congress under indira gandhi so under grand alliance it was ssp psp bharatiya jansang swatantra party bharatiya kranti dal all of them coming together under grand alliance and the other side it was uh, indira gandhi supported by cpi now indira gandhi said that our program is garibi hatao but this grand alliance is working on a program which is indira hatao or remove indira gandhi she focused specifically during her tenure on few important thing one was to build a strong public sector nationalize the bank impose ceiling on uh, rural land holding urban property uh, nationalization of bank abolition of privy purse uh, removal of income disparities uh, so those were some of the key things that she worked on and interestingly this time the seats that were won by congress under indira gandhi were extensively high and it was more than the last four general elections so combined seats were 375 seats in lok sabha and that was with a 48.4% vote share indira gandhi herself under her uh, congress party won 352 seats and all those with the grand uh, alliance had a grand failure with just 16 seats that were occupied now as soon as she came to power the time was not easy after she came to power there was an immediate crisis and this crisis was separation of east pakistan under the name of bangladesh so the indo indo pakistan war raged again and there was separation of bangladesh however under her steel uh, steelboard ship 
uh, it was the scene that the Congress was one of the dominated parties within the state at the center and being a protector of the poor and the underprivileged, she turned out to be a strong nationalist leader. And then was the restoration where Indira Gandhi reinvented the party. It was back after 1971 that Congress uh, requisitionist or the new Congress became the real Congress hold its importance for uh, popularity of uh, being a supreme leader among the poor, the Dalits, the minorities, the women and then restoring the Congress as its original uh, founding uh, party was. Now, once the Congress was consolidated under Indira Gandhi, there was an unprecedented political authority which was Indira Gandhi, but there were democratic expressions which were deep-rooted and suppressed. As a result, there were popular unrest that came in and issues around the development and economic deprivation again cropped in. So post this, what happened, we would understand in the upcoming lectures. But so far, we have discussed how political succession and the journey of Congress came in. How the period of 1967 election was a time when Congress turned out to a minority. Devaluation of rupee price hike was witnessed and it is believed that after nearly 60-70 years probably India is witnessing a similar scenario, a similar instance with increasing prices, inflation and um, uh, situations which were uh, similar to what were in 1967. So those are some of the key important things that we have uh, discussed here. How the political readers restored their presence, what was the idea behind the commitments of the political leader and the 10 point program under Indira Gandhi which was one of the foundation stones and uh, that led to her victory in the 1971 elections. So this was a quick summary. Uh, we'll be com covering the complete NCRT 12th lectures on political science in our sessions on YouTube exam race. Stay tuned.